Hello, and welcome to the We Chair Workshop. This is a workshop that I've put together to kind of demonstrate all the different workspaces in Fusion in a brief two to three hour time interval and get you exposed to it. So what we're gonna go ahead is build this image that you can see right here. Uh, to begin, we're actually gonna go into the create form environment, which is the sculpt, and we're gonna make a quad ball. We're gonna put it on the base plane and center it at the origin. Now, we're gonna change the dimension and put mirroring on this, but we really only get one shot at this dialog menu, in particular, the number of faces on the span here. Two is a great number. If you add too many faces, you're not gonna be able to control anything. You're gonna to have to make so many changes, it's not funny. But if you go too low, you're not gonna have any control whatsoever. So two's a good number for now. The next thing we're gonna do is go in and actually highlight these faces and delete them straight up. This uh, gives us kind of a basic chair, but the next thing we're gonna do is actually go in and edit this form. By selecting the faces, we can make major adjustments, as you can see here, just by grabbing the handles and moving it around. You can scale it, rotate it, uh, drag it from point A to point B along a plane. The grab handle is pretty awesome. The other thing, uh, after the faces, you can edit the lines themselves. Lines give you middle control on anything that you want to do, so that, that's a nice little medium area. And then finally, there's the vertices. Vertices give you very finite control over the area. Once you've got your basic shape in there, you can always go in and make small adjustments by inserting lines or vertices through the modify menu. So don't feel like you're completely limited by the two faces that you put in at the beginning. Finally, the last trick I want to show you is the Alt, which is to add material. So once you have something selected, if you press and hold the Alt key and drag it out, you add material to the existing shape. Again, the Sculpt environment just gives you a bunch of tools that you can use to make organic shapes. It's very cool. There, there's no other modeling environment out there like it. The last thing we need to do is actually thicken it so that we can turn it into a 3D body. And I like to, instead of doing a sharp, doing a soft here. It gives you a nice round organic shape. And to end, we're going to go ahead and finish the form. So the next thing that we're going to do is actually create the base. And we start by creating a sketch on the center plane. And I'm going to put a circle actually directly on the origin line. So I'm going to come back later and move up the chair. So don't worry about that for the time being. Once I have that done, I come back in and I'm going to do a press pull, it's, which is basically an extrude in this case, but it can be used for a lot of things. So once I get it to the right size, I'm actually going to make sure that it's symmetric so that it's all the way around the body. And now that it's a new body, I can come in and actually do a mirror. So mirroring around, the, make sure to pattern the body, by the way, otherwise you'll just get the face. Mirroring around the center plane gives me two objects that are symmetrical. So the last thing I need to do is move the chair up. So I use the right click, quick menu, drag the chair up, and then I'm just gonna look here to make sure it's close enough. You can get much closer, I'm sure. So now that we have our base, we need to model the frame. So I'm gonna sketch out a pathway on the edge of the base here. And this is just kind of a gen general frame. And I, if you click and hold, you actually get an arc command, which is a very cool trick. And the constraints, as you can see here, are kind of added automatically. You can always go back into the sketch palette on the right and add them yourself, but they're, they're pretty intuitive. I don't, rarely find myself having to do that. The next thing I'm going to do is a plane along the path that we just created, and I drag it all the way out to the end and click OK, and I'm going to start a new sketch, which is going to be a circle, a center diameter circle on that plane. I'm actually going to use a quick project include because it's really hard to click on the end of this line without it, and if you miss it, it's going to make your life a lot harder. So projecting allows you to reference features from other sketches within the plane that you've created. So now that I've done that, I can come back in and do a center diameter circle on that exact point. I'm going to go ahead and make it a 50 millimeter circle. And then I can finish that sketch and then do a sweep command under the create menu. And if I select my profile as the sketch and then my path as the line that we've created, I see that I get this cutout. And I don't want to make it a cutout, I want to make it a new body. And I'll come back in and do another mirror now. So drop down menu. And again, I want to make sure that I'm patterning the body and around the center origin. So we have a basic frame at this point and it's not really going anywhere. So now what we need to do is we actually need to create uh, the axles so that we can mount the wheels later. I like to put it on the origin and then do another symmetry. And here I'm going into the browser window and actually turning on the sketch pathway that we'd created earlier and then doing a two point circle on that. So once I finish that, I can stop the sketch and then do another press pull on my circle to actually create the axle all the way through the frame. Uh, having a little trouble zooming out. Okay, there we go. 
So again, red shows cut. I don't want to cut. So once I've turned on symmetric, I'm going to go ahead and do another new body. That makes it really easy to pattern. And I've already got this, this pathway in place, and I know that I want to do it along that. So why don't I go ahead and just do a pattern on path? So click there, and then again, make sure that I'm patterning a body, and then selecting the sketch from earlier as my path. I can drag it along this pathway and get the perfect. That's great. But I, I don't actually want three. I want two. And I, if I look over here, it's actually just a little off. So I don't want identical. I want path direction. Ah, there we go. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to drag it, make sure that it's right. Oh, there we go. Cool. That seems perfect for my axles. So now that I've completed that, the next thing I'm going to do is actually go out and find another uh, a wheel to use. This could be, you know, a, a a collaborator that's already created a wheel, or I can use sites such as GrabCAD that you know have a repository of CAD. So if I search for wheel, this is one of the first ones that comes up, and you guys can use it too. And I just go ahead and download that file. And when I'm done downloading that file, I can upload it into my data panel, which is where all of this gets stored. And if I've got multiple people in my group, all these changes are showing up for them as well. So now that it's in my data panel, I can go ahead and right click, insert it into the file, drag it out so I can play with it a little bit better. And I'm actually going to check first to make sure that I've got the size of my axles right. So I just quickly use the inspect tool to go ahead and check the diameter on this. And I see, oh, nope, that's only 24 millimeters. So I made the axles too big at the beginning. So if I go back in the history, I can actually change the, the uh, diameter of this, of my axle to 24 millimeters. Click sketch and of course everything updates, fully parameterized. So now I'm going to go ahead and do an assembly. So I click a joint and it gives me a little notification and I'm going to go ahead and do a cylindrical joint right around the end of this inner axle here and I want to put it on the front. So if I click that it actually shows me an animation with all the degrees of freedom that that joint allows. So I see that, yep, that looks about right. I don't need to change any offsets and I uh, can go ahead and then I can just do a simple copy and paste here. So copy, paste, and then I can drag out the new wheel to wherever it needs to be, and then repeat the joint. It's super simple. The movement is amazing in this software. So go ahead and play with that and make sure that you've got that down pat and get all four wheels on your chair. So now that we've kind of finished up the wheelchair, this is, this is quite functional. I can add a steering wheel if I want to. Um, Later, and you can too. I'm going to go ahead and actually show you some of the other workspaces. So the first thing I want to show you is Render. Render is super cool. Most of the time when you're sharing uh, sharing files these days, you're actually showing the digital. You're not sharing the actual prototype. So if I go into the Render and I do a setup, I can see a whole library list of all the different materials. I'm a big fan of Walnut, so I could just make it Walnut Chair. And uh, the, let's go into some more realistic materials and pick out some of the paints for the rest of the frame. And I, I like distinguishing between the frames, but I'm not the most artistic of people. So um, it, it's really simple to just drag and drop this stuff out. And actually, if you go into the right click menu on any of these items, you can edit the properties themselves. This would be really handy when simulation gets fully integrated into the environment. And of course, if you want to build your own libraries, it's pretty easy. You don't actually have to drop it onto the component in the, the viewer. You can drop it into the browser window as well. Some of those components that are really hard to reach in big assembly drawings, that makes your life easier. And then of course the gold steering wheel because you know we got to roll, roll deep here. If I go ahead and just click render, this is being done on my computer and I'm just going to do a quick little fast forward for you guys here so you don't have to wait for 20 seconds. But on your own it's pretty incredible what the normal render can do in about 20 seconds. And if you don't have the most power, high powered laptop, you can go ahead and do a cloud render too. This just makes your life easy. And then when you're done, you go ahead and just save the image. It's that simple. And this is something that you can do to really show professors and clients just kind of the power of your, your, your abilities. Share with them the file from the render and say, look at what we've done. What do you think? This makes collaboration simple. And finally, the last one I want to show you is animation. Animation is really cool to show, you know, big complica complicated drawings to contractors. Uh, it's really just a matter of using the, the viewer as you normally would. So if you make any moves with the video, it will automatically record. And if you drag out that uh, play build down at the bottom there, you can actually say, this is what I want to happen in this time frame. So I'm just going to show a quick little exploded view of all the components. And I, I did a basic one here. I'm just going to highlight the base and move that away. And of course, I have to get back into the transform menu. I'll just do that from the right click. Right click up is always the last command that you used. 
So uh, let's show a little bit more. We'll create another storyboard here, drag it out another three seconds, and I'll highlight a few more components, move them around. Um, let's see, let's get all the wheels. Let's go up. I'm going to shift, highlight all of these. Okay, cool. Grab handles, move that out. Bam. All right, I like it. I like it. Do another move, show that off, and click OK. And I can just go down to the bottom here and preview what I've done. And it shows me, yep, there's the move. The chair's coming off the top. And OK, exploded views. Oh, that last viewer move wasn't the greatest. Congratulations, you finished it and you should be pretty familiar with Fusion now. So there's a couple of things that you can do next. First, you can join the Student Expert Program. This is a great program we put together to kind of enable CAD uh, students such as yourself around the world. You can earn points which go towards great resume items and, and even cool cash rewards. The other thing that you can do is actually join our cool 3D modeling project. This is going on right now to make really awesome fusion drawings from airplanes to engines to motorcycles and even blenders and grinders. You get paid $250 to $500 per project. So it's a great way to learn the software and to make a little bit of money. Each project takes probably between 10 and 30 hours. So thanks for attending. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it and good luck with fusion.